And hello, shark fan, dribble of soldier of the inverted cross. Rip the full blown freak show. And it's that time of year again. It's today's December 30th, and the end of the year is very close. So today, I'll be doing my top, as I did last year, the top 15 Transformers I got in 2015. So kick back, enjoy, and let's see which Transformers I picked as my favorites for this year. And coming in at number 15 is one of the very few Transformers I wanted um, uh, for from the new R.I.D. show. Legion class, fix it. Why would I put this little guy on the list? Because he's accurate to how he is in the show. He's just a cool little robot. Really poseable. I've already reviewed him. Pretty sure I have. Um, just really well done. I mean, this is how he's supposed to be. That's all there is to it. Uh, I was actually going to bump him off the list, possibly, for Warrior Class Fracture, who I had ordered, but then Walmart didn't tell me he was on back order, and when I asked them why I hadn't my package been shipped, they were assholes, and they were like, well, we canceled it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So, yeah, that's why Fracture, the only Decepticon I wanted, isn't on this list. Fracture is a great little, not Fracture, Legion Class Fix It is a great little figure, and that's why he's in at number 15. I'm really glad I found this guy, and he's, he's still in Hasbro shop. He's pretty easy to find, but he is really awesome. So we're going to be moving on to number 14. Number 14. Now, this is a figure that um, a lot of people are on the fence about, but I loved and was excited about from the moment they announced it. Look at this shit. Okay. Combiner Wars Voyager Class Cyclonus. Now... I don't like him as a combiner that much because he was just a filler spot, basically, a repaint of use of the mold again. But I love Cyclonus. I like the fact that this one's bigger. He looks more authoritative, more in charge. I gave him the little mini con nightstick. Love the posability on him. Um, I did unscrew the backpack and remove the nose cone just so he didn't have as much backpack because I don't intend on combining him with anything. And I just love this feat. This one. Again, like fix it before my review or had for fifteen. Uh, don't think this guy's super rare or super sought after, so he's pretty easy to get. I'm, I'm assuming. Again, I bought this thing uh, on BBTS, but I have seen him at stores a few times. So yeah, this one is awesome. Really glad to have it. I don't care what people say. I was excited about it when it came out. I'm excited about it still. And yes, he is probably my favorite Cyclonus of the two that we got the Deluxe from years back. And this one. So, really glad to have it. We're moving on to see who got number 13. Coming in at number 13 was a figure I thought I'd never have due to the fact that it was just so hard to find online complete unless you buy a new in box, which is extremely expensive. Transformers R.I.D. Megatron. I love this figure. It's freaking awesome. It's probably one of my favorite Megatrons, and the one I use like as powered up Megatron with my uh, powered up Optimus. Uh, just really nice. Love the chrome, the shiny things, the horribly gaudy colors, the dragon feeties. It's really poseable. Just really glad I have this one, and I did take the little ball joint nose cone off. It's laying on the shelf just to have a little less kibble. Because other than that, he's pretty freaking awesome. Just hard to find complete. And who knows, this coming year I might pick up the Galvatron repaint of him just to have it. Love it. If you can find this thing complete, it is definitely, definitely worth the um, pickup. Definitely. I'd say up to 50 bucks for it. But yeah, it's a weird Megatron, but it's a really cool one. Now let's see who's at number 12. And number 12, coming in, uh, sleeping in. Barely, because I just recently got this and I reviewed it. The custom leader class Galvatron. Thanks to the disappointment of uh, the Titan Wars one with the whole gimmicky head thing where it transforms. Sorry, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I picked up this guy in replacement of him. The guy did a great job painting him. Just a great job with everything. And I've already talked a lot on this figure and reviewed it recently. Just It's nice to have this guy, as I said, in my review of him to put next to Combiner Wars. Megatron G1, just they're so G1 looking and just so cool together. 
This one I can't suggest really you pick him up because it's a custom, but I can suggest you make this with your uh, Energon Megatron or Energon Galvatron, whichever one you have. Really, really nice. Really worth it. Really enjoyed that I got this guy. And I always love to get a custom because it's something unique that's only in my collection. So, let's see who came in at number 11. Number 11 is a figure I got earlier in this year and reviewed. I actually got three of them. Uh, and that's why I'm putting on this list. I know it's the real gear robots, but when I made like the little... I got the other ones and put con symbols on them. And basically, I consider these guys my classic reflector. Uh, love, I love small figures like this, like a little below, like in between Scout and Deluxe, or Legends and Deluxe, whatever it is now. With the, the really, this one's really posable and really nice, and it's just cool to have them like standing around at the feet of the leaders and stuff. Um, it, he's really nice and a nice little modern camera version of G1 Reflector. Uh, whether you get the Autobot version or the Decepticon version, they're just really nice, and really cool, and just a cool little head sculpt. Just really awesome figures. And I can't stress that enough with these because I was really happy when I got these. And I still like fiddling around with them and putting them with the Viacons. And if you could get Army Build these guys, they would look great with the Prime Viacons. Um, he wasn't too expensive on eBay, so I'm, I'm assuming the price hasn't went up that much. Um, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the Autobot version is a bit cheaper, though. I will say that. I'm not sure, though. I'm just saying it because I think he was the more common one, and this was the repaint. But nonetheless, either version you get, Con or Autobot, this is a freaking awesome figure. Now, let's see who's in the first guy, the first robot that's cracking my top ten. Coming in at number ten, we've got another custom. Again, this is a figure. When I saw it, I really wanted, but I didn't buy it because... In all honesty, I detested the color scheme. Then Takara released it, and it came down to the same price. Well, on Amazon, it came down to the same price as the American version. And that was Transformers Age of Extinction Leader Class Grimlock. But I did better. I got the custom on eBay. You've probably seen me review this guy. Uh, he's holding a sword from my spare Motormaster slash Minasaur. Um... The colors on this just look better. He's a little more G1 colored. The eyes are red instead of freaking blue. What the hell, Hasbro? Uh, this looks awesome. He's posable. I know the spikes are supposed to be folded out, but I just leave them folded in to fill out the legs a bit more. Uh, I've got his weapons and stuff, and I haven't transformed him due to the paint. I don't want to mess the paint up. But just this is a beautiful, beautiful piece, and the person who customized this did a really good job. And this is pretty much the mega, the, the Grimlock I use with my Classics line, even though it's the freaking movie one. I just like how he's bigger than the rest of them. And just very well done with the metal wash, the gold, the red. Just I love the fact that he reminds me of Shredder. I think that's why I love movie Grimlock so much. He looks like he has Shredder armor on. So, since Grimlock cracked number 10, let's see who cracked in at number 9. Number nine was a, is a figure that I've wanted since I started collecting Transformers. Um, now, this is the Black Arachnia version, but it wasn't super close to our color scheme. So, yeah, I consider this one my Tarantulas. This is who I use as my Tarantulas. And I love this one. Now, I keep the feet folded like this just to make him a bit taller with the other Beast Wars guys I got. Um... This thing's awesome. For as old as it is, it's still really poseable with a ball jointed head, shoulders, and hands, uh, ball jointed legs, and um, knees. It doesn't have a thigh swivel. That's basically the one thing it's missing that it would need to be close to the modern stuff. But I love this figure. I loved Tarantulas. Him and Inferno were my two favorite characters from that show, from Beast Wars. Um, and really, if you can find this mold, more is Tarantulas than Black Arachnia. It is definitely worth it. I, I have a hard time imagining how classics, other than adding more articulation, how uh, generations, classics, whatever, will give us a modern tarantulas. Because this one was, as far as I'm concerned, almost perfect. So, yeah, I, I'm a huge tarantulas fanboy. So, who? let's take a look at who cracked in on number eight. Coming in at number eight is actually one that wasn't going to make this list because 
I was actually planning on uh, having Bruticus, Combiner Wars Bruticus at this time, and he would have been placed much higher on this list since Bruticus is my favorite combiner. But I wanted to get one Combiner Wars combiner on this list, and that's Cyber, not Cyber, Transformers, Combiner Wars, Minasaur. Now, I love Combiner Wars, what they did with the line, and I missed Transform 9 purposely a bit, just even more articulation. Um, I love the fact that you know, they finally got it right and gave us a Voyager with limbs that are deluxes. Now, nothing's perfect. The, each of these combiners all have their flaws, but I'm happy with this than dumping out a ton of money for third-party figures, which probably are better, but I'm not dumping out three and four hundred dollars on figurines. This pretty much scratches the itch I had for some combiners, and it fills in that gap that we had. And I am dying to get Bruticus on my hand, in my hands. When I make next year's New Year's video, you can be damn sure that Bruticus is going to be very high on that list. Because when I get him, it will be 2016. So he'll be the, one of the first ones that I buy next year. Minasaur is worth the pickup if, you have, if you're willing to run all these guys down. I am using the Wild Rider or Wild Rider leg. Um... These are pretty poseable. Uh, they have a bit of balance issues sometimes, but mine, I'm really happy with it. And he's the only combiner I've completed of the deluxes and the Vorgers. So, now, let's see who we got at number, because I've lost track by counting this down, number seven. Are we moving on to number seven, guys? Coming in at number seven was a figure I got for Christmas. I think the only Transformer I got for Christmas. And it was one I was excited about since launch. So I haven't had time to review her yet, but I have reviewed the mold. Takara Legends Deluxe Class Slipstream. I gotta say, as always, I'm scared to play with this figure or pose this figure a lot because of the just it's such a small figure. And I'm especially this one being uh, Japanese exclusive and clear plastic for the back of the head. Why, wow, guys? Why clear fucking plastic? I love this figure. I love this character. And this one is light years ahead of the freaking club exclusive we got painted from Starscream. I don't care if he had high heels for feet. He still didn't have a feminine looking body. He was a hunched over, pointy chinned, creepy Igor Starscream. And I love that Starscream, but not as my Fembots. This one is beautiful. Her face everything and I will go into more detail with her uh, when I actually review her but good lord I love this thing just the paint the colors buy this buy this right now I, I wasn't inclined really or it didn't really just appeal to me for the black arachnia or the nightbird but slipstream when I seen it I was like yep because when I first seen the wind blade mode I was like that'd make a freaking awesome slipstream with a bit of remolding and it looks really good I mean, amazingly good. Just go buy one. Don't even take my. Don't even bother like looking at this. Just buy one. It's a beautiful figure. So now let's take a look at number. What am I? I keep losing track. Sorry about that. Number six. We moving on to that one. Number six, guys. And here we are at number six, the last robot before the top five. Uh, and like I said, I didn't really litter the list with um, individual Combiner Wars guys, but there was one figure that I loved. And I'm so glad that they made Wild Rider, to, or Breakneck as he's called now, to combine with Minasaur because I was going to go buy a second Off-Road. I love Off-Road. I know he's the new member, and a lot of people didn't like that or whatever, but I, as far as that goes, I just love, as I've said several times, a good vehicle land-based Decepticon. The head sculpt, the just everything. I gave him the cro the pipe to beat people with from a uh, dead end, but and it, he came with the axe. But he's posable. He's cool looking. He's got a good aesthetic to him. The backpack works well for him. Just really cool. The colors are beautiful. I love the. I never thought I'd like blue with grayish black with a uh, red but good god this thing is awesome if i ever, if they ever make like him playable in a video game i want this is the body chastity i would use because i just love the look of it i love the vehicle mode it's just awesome even if you don't buy another combiner wars toy 
this guy's the deluxe to go for as far as I'm concerned. I did like Dead End. He was an awesome, awesome deluxe. But I just love... This one appeals to me so much more because when I think of the other Stunticons, I think of them as a unit, combined as one. This guy just looks like he's kind of like... Reminds me of Barricade. He was golfing his own and kicks some ass. So, this guy was number six. We're cracking in to the top five best. And coming in at number five. We're finally there, the top five. Let me just say, if I haven't already said this, I might have. This was a year of getting things for my collection, just like Bionicles, Transformers, the big ass Godzilla, just things, Transformers too, that I didn't think I was going to be able to find or afford, or just rareness of them, or just custom things. But Unicron from the Cybertron line, I think that's what he's from, it might be Energon, he cracks, the, he takes the first crack and goes in at number five. Love this thing. Mine isn't complete, but it's cl close enough for me. It's big, it's heavy, it's posable. It's got a cool light-up feature. Uh, there's a cool gimmick on the back here, but I don't have a Minicon at the moment to activate it. The head does move. Just going to say that because so many people are like, your head doesn't move, but it does. And this guy always looms over my Transformers now, just staring down at them. It's a beautiful figure with the posable fingers. I have him giving the finger all the time, holding other Transformers. Go hunt this thing down, buy it, it is worth it. The gimmick, I, I was talking about his chest splits up and a massive gun comes out, his stomach opens, he has panels to cram crap in, you can put all your pennies in there, you know, you can fill it with yogurt, I mean, it's freaking Unicron. Go buy Robot Satan right now. Okay, now I've got that out of my system, we're moving on to number four. Coming in at number four. Got a lot of big Transformers this year. Combiner Wars G1 IDW Megatron. I know this thing's flawed and it has its issues. But I love it. I love it so much. I might buy upgrade kits for this if they ever go on sale on BBTS. The head sculpt's beautiful. Uh, I don't connect these pieces on the back together just so it has the waist swivel. Um... Glad Hasbro gave us a G1 Megatron. I like the tank mode. It doesn't bother me. I never thought it was, you know, that effective to turn into a freaking pistol. So you could let the guy who is least trustworthy, Starscream, wield that said gun. He could have easily just thrown Megatron off a cliff. Um, I like the fact that he's a tank. It makes perfect sense to me. I love the way he looked in De Transformers Devastation. And that's pretty much this look. Um, he's worth it. He is worth the money. Go buy one. Um, there's an Armado repaint, I think. or a, I can't remember what series that Megatron with the horns is from. But I might even get that. But this one I love. Uh, screw the people who are like, oh, it doesn't fit in with Masterpiece. This isn't supposed to be a Masterpiece. As far as I'm concerned, this doesn't even go in my Transformers collection, so to speak. He just goes up with all the big leader classes that don't scale with anyone. He is worth the money, guys. I fully, fully love this figure. This was one of my, my birthday present and my favorite birthday present of all the things I got for my birthday. This one is my favorite birthday present. He's just one of my favorites. And I, he would have been higher on this list had it not been for the next, the top three Transformers on this list that are coming up. So just take one last good look at the awesomeness of Megatron. All hail. And we're moving on to the top three. Coming in at number three, this is a figure I never thought I'd have, and it's Cybertron Minosaur. But I call him Big Daddy because he looks like a Big Daddy from Bioshock, and I don't want him to be named after the combiner. Um, this thing's big, really poseable. I love the colors. A lot of people complain about it doesn't have hands. I don't mind that. I want him just to be a kick-ass destroyer. Uh, he looks really good with the other figures. He's so big, not combiner-sized, just he towers over the most. He seems like he would be the powerhouse type. I really never thought I was going to get this thing, and I think I won it on bid. I forgot like how much before. I just remember it being like I just remember going out and be like, "Up!" Oh. When I get home, it's probably like, "Oh, you lost!" And it's like, "Oh, you win the you win the bid." And I'm just like, "Wow!" I finally get this thing after all this time. It's such a good figure, guys. I really I know a lot of people are on the fence about this one, controversial about this one, or whatever they want to say. I love this toy. This is one of my favorite, favorite Transformers that I own. And he would have been higher on this list hadn't it been for two more Transformers. So let's go ahead and take a look at number two. And here we are, number two. 
and fitting a fitting number since we'll be looking at Megatron second in command. Cybertron Galaxy 4 Starscream. This is the Toys R Us exclusive one. I got it on eBay. It was missing the gun and the kibble, so whatever on that. Um, I bought it for robot mode. I gave it Sky Shadow, Generation Sky Shadow or Black Shadow weapons. I never thought I'd have this one just because of the fact that they were so expensive. But uh, because of them being a Toys R Us exclusive in a two pack, I was trying to get it on this side. I'm not used to mirrored effect. But um, I love this figure and I'll be reviewing him soon because uh, I haven't got the chance to review anything lately. But he will be reviewed along with all of the other Transformers on this list. But down to business. I got the Dirge mold last year and I think it was on this list. But I always wanted the Starscream one more just to go to my Classics collection. And this fills it out because I made that custom shockwave. I painted my Classics Megatron to be more G1 accurate. Uh, I pretty much have the sound wave I want for for the, the Classics lineup. Um, the Starscream was all I needed, and I'm so happy with this one. This is a beautiful, beautiful figure. If it had bicep, bicep swivels, it would have probably taken the number one spot. Now, before we do move on to number one, I'm going to do a few honorable mentions. So yes, it, this is figures worth it. If you get it as Dirge, Starscream, or whoever you get it as. Um, we'll be moving on now to the honorable mentions. And here we are, the honorable mentions. Now, I've actually got more figures than these four. I think four I'll be showing. But these were the four that really impressed me. I really wish I could have put them on the list. But it, going in with the you know 15 I got this year, they couldn't make the list. The Cybertron Metroplex. I love this figure. I, I wish I would have gotten Generations Metroplex back when he came out. But he's so expensive now. But this one works just fine. He's pretty cool. And I, really poseable, really nice. Loud ass ratchets. I, I love this. I wish he could have made the list, but as I said, the numbers. The next one that I'll be showing is one I recently got and haven't even gotten around to reviewing. And I actually like this guy. He's a repaint. I've always liked this repaint slash remold over the original, and that's Legends Chop Shop. Um, I don't know why I always preferred him to Shrapnel, even though Shrapnel's black and purple. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of orange, but I like red. So I just I think I like the head. Uh, I'll get to reviewing this guy. He's really good. Um, and the other ones I got this year. Uh, yeah. This one was basically what I who I used for my uh, Beast Wars animated Pterosaur. Uh, it's the Transformers Adventure Swoop. I gave it a con symbol, even though it's not showing up with the crap. Um, it works well enough. It's red and black. You can't go wrong with red and black. And the last figure. Oh is uh, one that I, there is, as I said in his review, there's no freaking excuse that we didn't get this in America. Age of Extinction Stinger. As always, I like a good car bot, and this guy's a good car bot, and thank crap, he was, it was a good Bumblebee toy, but it's Bumblebee, and I will never buy that idiot again, other than the one time I bought him, unless it's a Decepticon version or something like that. But yeah, he is an awesome, awesome figure. He's red and black. You can't go wrong with red and black. So now that the honorable mentions are out of the way, we're going to get number one, guys. And here we are at number one. And I think all along we knew who it was going to be. It's the figure I dumped the most money into this year. The one I was the most excited and disappointed about when I saw the pictures. When I got it in hand, I was blown away at the awesomeness of it. And that is Combiner Wars Titan Class Devastator. Now, I don't care for the individual robot modes that much, but Takara did make them look a bit better. But for what it is, I still have the rubber band on mine just to hold that hand on a bit better. I'm very happy with this. I'm extremely happy with uh, how this turned out. I love the size of it. I'm more than inclined now to buy Triptychon when he comes out for the quality of this one. Don't listen to the shit people have said. I've seen some reviews that are like, Ooh, this is why he sucks. Most of the primary people do love this thing for what it is. Um, it's a big, awesome devastator. It's not meant to be masterpiece scale, as people have been saying. It fits okay, I'm supposing. I don't own any masterpiece stuff. But it's a beautiful figure. Beautiful head sculpt, colors, paint, what paint there is, or if there is any. But... It works. They, we wanted a Devastator, and unless you want to pay a shitload of money for 150, this was a good deal. 
and Hasbro gave us the best they could, and they did a really damn good job as far as I'm concerned. This guy, like I said, is number one on my list. Um, uh, I'm now as far as Combiner Wars go, Bruticus would have beat him. Sorry, I just it's a fan thing. I love Bruticus, but this for what it is is an amazing figure. I highly suggest you get it, and I'm gonna do a little outro for you guys. So let's do that. So that's it, guys. It's the end of the year. Finished up. Last of the Transformers reviews, or top 10 Transformers. Stay tuned, though, for next year's reviews, um, which will definitely be the big ass Godzilla. Uh, I got all the EV plushes. There's a t bunch of new Bonacle mocks I did of the Skull Villains. Uh, what else have I got? Um, Bruticus review will be coming when I get the new Bonacles, a Slipstream review. Um, freaking chop shop review just anything you've seen in this video that i haven't reviewed i actually hold on guys i actually have a list here and i'm going to uh read right off to you guys what i'll be reviewing uh it'll always be smash brothers videos guys i'll go and say that um i'll be reviewing slipstream a greninja amiibo Ike, the ev plushes as i say it uh several jurassic park figures including chaos effect uh the mutant shredders from teenage mutant ninja turtles the giant Godzilla back there. Uh, the new Bonacle and Mox, as I said. The Chop Shop. A Bucky O'Hare action figure. The Star Scream. Mantis Alien. And any other aliens I win um, on bid. Uh, things that I intend on purchasing to review for you guys will be Warrior Class Fracture. Bruticus. Tahu. The Creature of Fire. Umarak the Hunter. Onu and his creature I'm getting to make into a mock of... Uh, the modern Makuta with the mask of control, if I get it. So don't count on it, though. Uh, if I can find that Fulgore figure they keep talking about with the Killer Instinct action figures, that will freaking be mine. Uh, Roy Amiibo, Bayonetta Amiibo, Rob Amiibo, and Cloud Amiibo. Those are the things I have down to buy. But, you know, thank you guys for a wonderful year. Um, all the new subscribers, all you old subscribers, just guys, thanks a lot. It means the world to me. I'm glad you're watching. Show your friends, and... Um, that's really all I have to say, but I'm looking forward to another year of filming and um, making new material for you guys, as always. Uh, just stay tuned. There'll always be more, more, anything I can do for this channel, I will be doing. Uh, any ways to progress, any ways to bring back some of the older stuff you guys like. Just know I, that next year, 2016, nothing's going to change but the number as far as I'm concerned for me. So I hope you guys have a wonderful new year. Be safe. Um, um, and that's really all I can say. I hope you guys have a wonderful new year. This has been your beloved Soldier of the Inverted Cross, Rip the Full-Blown Freak Show, signing off. Farewell. Happy New Year, guys.